Welcome to Insight Training's learning series on different models of cameras. And today we're going to focus on the FLIR K2. Uh, what we want to do is highlight specific attributes or features you may not be aware of that may not be common knowledge. Today, hopefully, this information will benefit you if you own this model. As we said, we're going to go through different cameras as we do this. Uh, what we want to start with is getting you to understand what the K2 is. The K2 is a situational awareness camera. Uh, How is it different from other cameras? It's uh, more battle hardened than most. It's actually got better insulation. Uh, it's a pistol grip. It's built to take the beatings of the fire ground, whereas some other models may not be quite as tough or uh, endure the heat that they take. Uh, the FLIR makes several different models of situational awareness cameras from a C3, K1, K2, and then they have a mid-grade decision-making camera called a K33. Uh, the K2 is probably the most uh, endurable model out there as far as what built for the fire ground. And we'll talk about different versions and how that can help you. So a situational awareness camera, however, is meant for preventing firefighter disorientation. Now, this is primarily due to their limited refresh rate. This is a nine hertz refresh rate camera, not a 30 hertz or 60 hertz like your decision-making cameras. And it does not have a higher resolution infrared detector. It's a 160 by 120, which is approximately 19,000 pixels. And then it has a digital overlay known as MSX. You may notice that when you put the look at the image, it actually looks pretty good in daylight. But when you go into a fire or low light situation, the image degrades. It also has a uh, thermal sens sensitivity of less than 100 millikelvin. NFPA wants you to have 80 millikelvin or less. Allows you to see better details of objects of similar temperature. This is your two, two comparisons. So you understand the difference between a situational awareness camera and decision-making camera. They both have their purpose and their merit. On the left, we have different examples of situational awareness cameras from the FLIR K1, K2, Seek Fire Pro, uh, MSA iTech, iTIC, to the Scott site. Now you have the MSA Lunar as well. And then you have all the different models on the right, which are all decision-making cameras, which are higher resolution, faster refresh rate, larger screens, better insulated, and they're used for strategic decision-making. Now, we talk about the FLIR K2 specifically. You look at the difference in the picture between it and the K65. The K65 is the NFPA approved model that FLIR makes, NFPA 1801 certified. You look at these two images and you're like, wow, the K2 has a better image. That's because it has a digital camera overlay known as MSX. So what that does is it overlays the actual video picture and the thermal picture together. So outside, it does produce a better picture. And that's an inspection grade trick that they use for inspection thermography when we're looking at like electrical breaker boxes, when we have to read the breaker box, the digital camera allows them to do that. Uh, your situational awareness cameras are not used for exact temperature readings. It's not a thermometer, no fire service tick is. We don't recommend using them for size up, search or directing hose strings. However, they do have their merit in short distance and short little brief situations. They are great for staying oriented, locating the fire, locating other firefighters, Main, you know, locating other egress points, secondary means of egress and other things. One of the things we want to talk about though is the overall specs of the camera. The camera has a 35 by 47 field of, field of view. What does that mean? 35 degrees vertically, 47 degrees horizontally. This is wider than the majority of the situational awareness ticks on the market, which allows you to see a bigger area, especially if you flip it sideways like we teach called the gangster grip. When you're looking down a hallway, you're able to see floor to ceiling in one shot. So it allows you to see where the victim is and where the fire is if you are by yourself or taking a quick look. Uh, the temperature modes, it's our gains are high and low sensitivity. If you notice in most of these pictures, it's in low sensitivity each time. We actually do a little cheat, a little hack in FLIR tools and go in and lock this camera in low sensitivity. We'll tell you why here in a minute. Uh, it actually benefits those who can't afford another camera. Application modes, it's got an asterisk besides TI basic. Uh, actually, you can program it to do any of the other application modes FLIRS offers. The only disadvantage is that you cannot change them randomly. You have to go back in and plug it to a computer to do so. Uh, I actually lock most of mine in search mode, which is a zero to 300 degree range only, but it produces a better picture in lower temperatures. It's just a different option for those who may be doing different things with it. As we talked about, it's a 160 by 120 resolution camera, 19,200 pixels. It's a nine hertz refresh rate. So that's a slower refresh rate. Uh, the MRTD, minimal resolvable temperature difference or noise equivalent temperature differential, depending on which 
an instruction manual you read is less than 100 millikelvin. A millikelvin is a thousandth of a degree. Uh, so the lower that number, the better your chances of seeing objects or differences in objects of similar temperature. This is when we talk about field of view with this camera, you can actually flip it sideways and see a much greater picture when you're going down a hallway, gain approximately 17 more degrees and more pixels to analyze that environment. Uh, it actually was, we found this back as far back as 1999, Carrollton, Texas, Carrollton Fire Department came up with this as far as our knowledge, we just called it the gangster grip. Uh, your temperature modes, high sensitivity and low sensitivity is a comparison between a K2 and a Bullard looking at the same fire outside. Uh, obviously, the K2 has a pretty picture when we have visible light, uh, but your camera goes from zero to 300 degrees in high sensitivity, which means it has high sensitivity to detail, low temperature. But when that triangle engages, you're looking at low sensitivity. That is low sensitivity to detail. When we talk about understanding the difference between the two, high sensitivity equates to high sensitivity to detail. Like I said, but when you look at the picture here where you see my hand in front of the max firebox, Low sensitivity does mean low sensitivity to detail. I may not see me or a victim or objects of lower temperature as well because it's focusing in on the heat. But it's no different than your eye switching from dilated to constricted and you can't see detail as well when you're focused in on the light. So if you look at this picture here, you can get a better example how I kind of fade into the background here but the max firebox is clearly visible. We're doing a resolution test here. Application modes, these are the ones you can program the camera in TI basic, grayscale, fire mode, search and rescue mode, heat detection mode. There's one other option in there, I believe it's an inspection grade mode you can apply to it, which is like iron bow or fusion color palette. Uh, if you look at these options, I the only ones I'm really, I like a lot is TI basic and search and rescue mode. The other ones have their merit, but as far as for what we're doing, TI basic is your standard fire service color palette that NFPA recommends it's black, gray, white, yellow, orange, red, and that's from cold to hot. Whereas in search rescue mode, the benefit of it, if you're not working in a high heat environment, is it kicks in color at 200 degrees, where TI basic doesn't do it till 300 degrees. So size up, uh, late conditions like overhaul, when you're trying to find an overheated electrical outlet in someone's home or overheated electrical object of any kind, uh, smells and bells, it's great for that. Uh, this is an example of that where we're using this in the size up feature outside where we have visible light at one of the training burns we went to in Cherville Fire Department. You can clearly see the gable vent lit up yellow, red, and orange. Start, it starts engaging color at 200, whereas in TI Basic, we wouldn't see anything but gray and white. So this is a beneficial application mode. However, it's not to be used in fire attack and high heat conditions because you will experience something known as saturation. Uh, firefighters used to call it whiteout. So the whole screen go red and you'd lose detail. It's very beneficial mode for outside, size up, overhaul, the things we mentioned, but it stays in high sensitivity, which means it's a single gain mode. So this is the reason we do this is to give you more information to make better decisions and set your tools the way you want to set them to help you perform the way you need to perform. A lot of you may be saying, well, why are you focusing on, you know, a less expensive camera in this particular environment? Uh, I've traveled a lot. And one of the things I've learned is not everybody has a large budget. And unfortunately, as much as I'd love for everyone to have, you know, a decision making camera on the front right seat of every truck and a situational awareness camera on every firefighter, that's not reality. Uh, budgets have been hit hard and many departments can only afford situational awareness cameras or what I call mid-grade price point cameras around $2,000 to $3,000. So what are you gonna to say to them? Well, we have to help our firefighters with the tools they have, whether they're NFPA compliant or not. So the goals of these educational videos is to help you use the tools you have so that in the hopes that you'll use them to the best of your ability, know that what their limitations are and know their intentions and that when you get to the point that maybe your department can afford or gets a grant for a decision-making camera that you can move forward with that. But until then, I want you to know what you can and cannot do with these models and how you can kind of cheat the system a little bit and use some of these modes to help you until you can afford those. So let's stay intelligently aggressive, help each other, share the knowledge, share this video, go to our YouTube channel and check it out. Thanks so much. We appreciate your support. God bless.